Beans. 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 from Even Stevens and you're watching Max Trice tonight! Good afternoon everyone. Turn up the AC, turn down your windows because we're bringing, the heat is coming. We got, when you think of a good actor, I don't know who you think of, I think of Stephen Anthony Loris, star of Even Stevens, star of Kicking and Screaming, Cat in the Hat, Everclear, Father of Mine music video. Really one of the finest actors around. Cause you, you, you might not know who you are, but if you see you in a movie, pay attention because Stephen Anthony Lawrence is one of the best around. What's so going you. down, everybody? How's everybody doing out there in the interweb land? It's your boy, Stephen Anthony Lawrence Beans from Disney Channel's Even Stevens, among others. How y'all doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing in, the, in, this, uh, in this lockdown environment, Steve? God, dude, trying to stay sane. Trying to stay sane is a big part of life right now, to be real. You know, trying to have amazing creative outlets like this, you know? Absolutely. Well, we, I just want—I want to get—I want to get right into it. I want to throw the throw the fastball. You're one of the very few people to have experience working both with Nickelodeon with the Amanda Show and Disney with Even Stevens. So, uh, what are your like? What do you what like? What are the key differences between Nickelodeon and Disney? Well, you know, okay, Disney. Uh, uh, I worked on a lot longer. So, and Nickelodeon, I only did two episodes of Amanda Show, right? So I did get a little, uh, you know, I was around Disney people a lot longer, you know, that show. Um, I don't know. I think Disney, our show was just a, a lot, a lot closer. Like I went, I, went, I went on the Amanda show and it's like, you know, because, you know, you still have to do three hours of school with these people when you're, you know, under 18, right? So, and you kind of get a vibe of how kind of shit works from the, you know, when everybody's sitting there doing their homework and shit because the teacher doesn't really do shit. The, the teacher sits there and makes sure that we're not fucking getting fucked up in class. Pretty much. <laughs> so the teacher sits there and reads a fucking magazine or some shit back then, the times or some shit. Fucking even Steven's set was lit, dude. We'd all just be doing our homework, but still like fucking around, like just, you know, like a, a normal fucking thing, like, you know, blowing spit wads at people and, just fucking around, right? Having fun, you know? And when we're not doing that, we're, like, rehearsing, right? Because, uh, well, fuck that, you know? We could all just do our fucking shit anyways. It was, you know, later. It, was, it wasn't it was a big thing, right? So, uh, that was, like, the weirdest thing. And I don't know, like, it, it was just a lot quieter set. Like, you know, I don't know. It's just, we had a lot more fun on our set, you could tell. Uh, topical topic but there's been a lot of executives at Disney and a lot of directors and producers at Nickelodeon who've been fired for sexual harassment and even uh, child sex, sex crimes to executives at Disney. Did you see any of that or like see any whisperings or, or is no. that? No, at Disney, no, never. Honestly, no. Our show wasn't like that. It was, it was really more of a family environment, dude. It, it there was no freaking predatory behavior that I ever experienced on honestly any show that I've seen. So no pizza gate. No pizza No, gate. no, dude, no. Definitely not. Shia did not have some some no. He didn't no. He didn't um oh God, who's a he didn't pull a Mark Wahlberg and have some, you know, Vietnamese guy tied up in the back. No. <laughs> I was about to make that same joke. He didn't he didn't do any crime. Shia? No, no, there wasn't any of that shit going on. <laughs> it was, it was like friendly fucking around, dude. Like I remember, like I put on a bra and put fucking oranges in the bra and was chasing him down the street with it, like just. <laughs> so like just come like normal childhood pranks and it's yeah, like normal okay. childhood class. Yeah. Sure. If you could fucking somehow construe that me chasing shy around with a bra and two oranges in it when I was like thirteen, sexual harassment. Sure. Okay, that happened. But other than that, no, we were like fucking around, and he was no. Give me a break. <laughs> so not that, yeah. No, no I, I, I honestly, in my research, it does seem it was more prevalent on the on the music side and more in the two thousands. And what are your thoughts on that? Just like, just as a consumer, like I, I think there was a, a quality drop. You were in the golden era of children's programming. What are your thoughts on Disney today versus nineties? When you had some yeah, like great freaking shit sucks now. It has no fucking soul. I don't know, man. Yeah, I, it I seems know. too like it seems too like manufactured, like a factory. It is, dude. 
It has no soul, dude. It doesn't. It does. A lot of the writing out there doesn't have any soul. And I think we were just spoiled, you know, with our writers. Oh, you had some great writers. And, and was like, were, like how what, was it a collaborative process or? Uh... Yeah, dude. You know, the, the big thing that I used to do and was so excited about is like three, we would be shooting an episode and then they'd have like drafts or like ideas um, in like little like bins on um, through the walkway to set, right? And that you walk past like the writers, writers rooms uh, going to set one way, right? Um, and they'd always have kind of like little ideas in their bins that they kind of throw to each other to look at. So of course, dude, I'm way too fucking nosy. <laughs> oh, dude, I'm way too nosy, man. And like, I just, oh, they had some great ideas that I, I wish we had another three seasons, you know? No, honestly, you know, like you guys were like, honestly, uh, I, I, I had a discussion with someone about like how even Stevens was the turning point for, for Disney. Cause then you guys began the, the golden era, which to me ends at sweet life and Zach and Cody. That was the golden era from like 2000 to 2000, like 10 or 15. You guys had a great run. And yeah, your dude. musical episode, that was so innovative. Yo, and fuck, dude, fucking Zach and Cody's back in the news. You hear he just got arrested, man? Uh, um, one of them, uh, Dylan Sprouse? Or I thought he's innocent. I thought he's suing people on Twitter for Me Too or he got no, arrested. No, no, he got arrested being a man of the people at one of the protests, bro. Wow, good for him. And I, yeah, I, he was smoking yeah, cigs at the Met Ball, too, I saw, which is great because I hate the Met Ball, so good for him. Uh, really? The, uh, yeah, with the, uh, the, well, the Devil Wears Prada girl. She throws a party every year. And uh, one of the oh, really? five kids, like, kind of was messing around. So good for him. <laughs> oh, fuck him. Yeah, I don't care. Dude, so, yeah, I got to give him props. I was, see, I always, I don't know. I always look down on other child actors for whatever reason. <laughs> you think, you think, you, do you think child actors are pressured to not be political? Because there's just, like, so much on the line. Oh, like, the whole like, fucking shut up and dribble for actress? Shut up and act. <laughs> shut up and act? Yeah. I, I mean... Dude, yeah. Now, I mean, yeah. I mean, yes and no. I don't think that anybody's trying to shut up fucking actors. I think they're just trying to shut up fucking some of these actors that have no you, you connectedness with what the fuck is going on in the world. It's like, it's like, it's like the Imagine video and shit like that. <laughs> You're not. Why weren't? Why didn't they invite you? Why didn't oh, they? Oh fuck you? off! Because I had told them to go fuck themselves. That's yeah. why. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's great. Cause they, they probably like up until the release of that video, they thought where they were changing the world and they had that look like we did it. We did it, guys. Racism. We did it. Over. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Found it. Found it. Fuck you. Blow me. <laughs> yeah. No, so you think it's just like an, an like more of not a, a pressure, but more of just like a, shel a sheltered thing. It's just oblivious. You're just a fucking oblivious that, man, I wish someone could do something as they sit there on their fucking ivory tower. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't anybody do something? It's like fucking Lady Gaga gets on here. Won't you help feed the children? Bitch, I know you've got a craft service on the other side of that camera. Get the kid a fucking sandwich. <laughs> yes, exactly. Fuck you, you know? Uh, just, uh... So you were so no so who so you've worked with a lot of just like next level famous actors from Will Ferrell, Mike Myers, Shia LaBeouf. Who, who would you say is the most down to earth, or someone who isn't like someone like let's talk good about someone famous? Like, oh, dude, yeah, Will Ferrell is fucking awesome, dude. Like That's literally, awesome. he's another one, dude. We can we could we could have a whole nother fucking movie based off of just the 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 film that we already shot and didn't use for kicking and screaming. That was there's awesome. that much footage. I hope so. Like, yeah, that, like, that, like, hey, if anyone's watching this, make that sequel. Bro, was and there's even, like, different cuts, too, that they were trying out. Like, there's, like, an R-rated cut of uh, Kicking and Screaming, which no one ever saw. Oh, screw the Schneider cut. The, the, Zach, the Zack Schneider version of the Just League's to be terrible. Release the freaking Will Ferrell cut. Oh, right? Screaming. Dude, yeah. that's another thing, dude. I would love to see an actual fucking remake with Danny DeVito playing the Penguin, like, but gritty. Now that DeVito knows how it's supposed to be done, he needs to fucking give the guy another chance, dude. They say Tim Blake's <laughs> coming back to film another Batman with uh, Michael Keaton. So maybe maybe they could redo it. Nolan style. I don't know about Burton doing it. Me neither. <laughs> what happened to Burton? Because he's a Disney guy. 
like he fell off because he had a he had a good run then just like yeah he ruined a lot of childhoods with like cause I, I was a I, I grew up on fan of the apes he ruined that for me he ruined yeah. Charlie uh, chocolate chocolate factory for a lot of people uh, uh, Alice in Wonderland like he's been just destroying childhoods he's the book yeah guy. yeah Charlie and Charlie and chocolate factory was oh god dude that was pretty 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 bad I'd love to see. I'd love to see – one movie I'd like to see him do is The New Little Mermaid. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right. That could be interesting. That would be twisted. That would be but, interesting. But not, not, the, not the 1990 Little Mermaid. I want the, uh, the 1863 Little Mermaid. Yeah, the parable. Yeah, the, where the, the parable where the fucking – you know, <laughs> she turns to sand and dust. <laughs> <laughs> so, who's, who's your favorite director? That, that's uh, worth, or, or, or of all time, either, either way. Okay, well, that I've worked with, I gotta go with Fred Savage. Gotta go Whoa, with Fred Savage. Uh, he, he, me and him growing up in the same town. No way, really? Yeah, shout out to Fred Savage. That's hey, all. Awesome. What a great they, writer, director, producer, everything. So, shout out big, to Fred Savage. Big time, big time, like actors, director. You know what I mean by that? Yeah. Very he's much an actor's about, uh, record. Wonder years. Oh, I'm mean, going all times. Just because you know he's he's done it before, so he knows how to speak actor. You wouldn't believe how many act or how many directors don't know how to speak actor, and we'll just That's fucking give you a we'll just, we'll just give you a fucking line reading. Oh my god, dude! Shit still okay. drives me nuts. What else is going on, dude? One thing that I'm kind of I know you're a political guy too, and I wanted to talk about this with you. Why the fuck isn't, you know, the one um, uh, where the, the story where Russia paid the Taliban to kill U.S. troops getting more fucking story? Like, what, one thing I'll say about the news in general, and you'll probably agree with me, is like the news is like two years behind. There'll be a story in two years from now. Like yeah. Bill Cosby, that was, that was like 2004 when he settled a case admitting that he was giving drugs to women, but they, they took him 10 years to report it. So if, if the Russia uh, hit story is true, well, uh, the news will be really excited like two to four years from now. It's my personal opinion. I and mean, it's, if it's not true, they'll, they'll move on to the next thing. So we'll, was that? That is, has to be the biggest impeachable offense. If he freaking knew about that and then he imposed no sanctions at all, like he could, we can even argue he's been pretty favorable to Russia in recent months, you know? Yeah, sort of, but like it would be, uh, this would be a very bad story. But my thing with Trump though too is like, there's been so many times through the last four years where I'm like, oh, this is it, this is it. He said that one thing, or he did that one action, it's over. Like, okay, tef- teflon <laughs> gone, like, man. But that's that's happened like I'd say at least thirty times, and so I, I don't like I don't I'm not I'm not I'm just saying like uh, we gotta wait to verify that news story because right now it is anonymous reporting. But you would think it'd be a big deal if if Russia was paying hits on our soldiers. Yeah, dude. And to be real, I don't, I don't, I don't see the, I don't see the twenty twenty election going well for 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 Biden. For really, so you're you're predicting a Trump win? Are, I do. Are, are you pick, are predicting a Beans win? I will have to accept the nomination if 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 the people want the beans. I will have to accept the nomination. We want the beans, and I and I will say if you uh if you just stay at your apartment and do nothing, you'd you'd be better than uh like the last fifty presidents, the uh, next forty five presidents. <laughs> I mean, shit. I mean, you do got a point. You got a point there. <laughs> just stay home. Just stay home. I mean, fuck, dude. I'm, what the fuck? The what, what, what? Fucking Seinfeld was one of the fun, most profitable shows of all time. And what was it about? A fucking show about nothing. A show about nothing. And, yeah, and, we can have a presidency about wait, nothing. Wait, wait, wait. Why isn't Seinfeld being me too right now? He like oh, started. Dude. He started dating his wife when she was seventeen, and he was like thirty. Oh, dude, I know he should. He's another one of these freaking. It's, but the, the, the media only like that's that's what scares me is like there's so much stuff that's just like open knowledge, and they don't report on it until it's like an opportune time. Ooh. Like Bill Cosby, as I said, that was open knowledge since two thousand four. The Maybe media, the Jewish yeah. he doesn't they don't want to piss off piss off the Jewish mafia, bro. I mean it's a it's a common <laughs> it's true. Jewish, Jewish mafia. No, I, I, so I, I'm a Jew and uh one one thing I want to talk about is uh I know my community was very upset at you when you became uh, a child star with, with even Stevens with the bacon situation. With the bacon. It is true, it is. I've gotten a lot <laughs> of people. So what what exactly happened? 
Like, so, like, was it an official, like, you got a letter, or did you get a... Yeah, dude, it had a fucking, like, insignia, like, a little badge. I was freaked out at first. Because <laughs> it said Jewish Defense League. Like, it had this fucking badge. I was like, fuck, is this, like, a warrant or some shit? So, Superman <laughs> and, uh... <laughs> I think a few, a few Jewish superheroes were on your door saying, like, hey. And what, what was the complaint? Because, yeah, for, for everyone watching, uh... Yeah, so it was. It, Stephen, Stephen was famous on his TV show for eating eating bacon. Eating bacon. If people don't know of this, um, yeah. This, so, I, yeah, I, I, my my agent got the damn letter, and it was it was kind of like you got to see this thing. So they they sent it to me, like special marks, like hey, check this one out. It's insane. It's funny as hell. So uh, they were like, yeah, we, we pretty much um. Uh, to whom it may concern, they didn't even address it to me. They were like, to whom it may concern, we've witnessed um, Stephen Anthony Lawrence, the uh, actor playing Beans on Disney Channel, even Stevens, even Stevens, perpetuating religious crimes against humanity. This Consider this like a cease and desist order or some fucking shit. Um, God damn it. Uh, and what was it? Um, they cited off something really quippy. Um, 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 live long and prosper. Yeah, live long and prosper. Or like, no, it was something about pork, but it was fucking ridiculous. Uh, it was like, um, may his, may the bacon juices wash over you, or something like that. I don't, I don't fucking know. <laughs> was that weird <laughs> shit? <laughs> you think that? Do you think that was a, a weight on your career? The bacon scenes. It could have been. Could have all been the bacon the I ate? I don't know, man. It could have been, dude. Did you get any crazy, like, you know, like just being a kid, but then being famous at the same time, that kind of, you know, because like, I wouldn't want anything that happened in my childhood to be broadcasted on the internet or on TV. Uh, what, what, just like crazy, um, let's see. Even stupid, stupid stuff. Like we Honestly, just, dude, no, like, bro. Yeah. I got lucky as fuck. Well, I don't know. See, I don't know, man. I don't want to jinx it and say fucking yeah. I got lucky and some asshole had a camera phone one day that I find out. So, bro, I got, I don't. <laughs> yeah, this is gonna, <laughs> yeah, this is, I don't want to fucking say I got away with something and some motherfucker yeah. see in this interview like, oh, you think you got away, <laughs> you motherfucker. You <laughs> That's your limitations only this 20 years. You're done. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I got it. So I got to shut the fuck up for another two years and then we can talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that must have been tough, though. So like, because like, no, like as a kid, you kind of feel like you're invincible, and that like no one's watching, and you make mistakes. But yeah, did you have that sort of pressure to like behave like an adult? As well, yeah, of course, there's a freaking you know morality clause. You know, it's Disney Channel. You know, so you can't you know say you know fuck or cock or balls or pussy or anything like that. You know, one thing I want. I hope this we could talk about in this interview. Is there, there are a lot of normal Disney stars like yourself. Like Christy Carlson Romano seems to be pretty doing good right now. Yeah, I, I, you know we're all, but that's just it, bro. I think we all have our fucking kinks, and I think a lot of time the media can fucking put a spotlight on something. Yeah, and it becomes a lot bigger than it is. You know, absolutely, and and I, and I do think the message of Even Stevens and and the shows in that era were a lot more wholesome than what we're seeing today, with like Ariana Grande and Cardi B. Fuck them! I get some money. That's not a good message to be sending to kids. Okay, but is that more yeah. targeted to kids, or are the kids just listening to that because they have fucking shit programming now? You're right. So you think the shit programming makes a situation where the kids are like, "We need to find something else," and they yeah, are. of course, dude. Because yeah. if they if the kids had good shit on Disney Channel, would they maybe be listening to fucking Cardi B? The answer is no. Yeah. You know. Well, well, uh, it's interesting because Ariana Grande is a Nickelodeon product. I don't know. I, I, I've got I've got nothing but respect and love for for Ariana Grande because I think she she handled a lot of this shit extremely well, dude. To be real, absolutely. She 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 survived Dan Schneider, who got fired from Nickelodeon. Yeah, right. To be you real, what were your experiences with Dan Schneider? Because you you work with him with the Amanda Show. You know, dude. Like I'm friends with Alexa uh, Nicholas. You know, and I, I gotta believe I gotta believe her. You know, I I'll, I'm gonna take I gotta take her word for it, dude. To be real. You know, I don't know why she would lie about something like that. To be real, that's kind of tough. It's like, I think there's a lot of, like, as a kid, there's so much stuff that, like, happens that's just, like, so above you. 
Well, of course, maybe I was just totally unaware of it, you know? But yeah. that's just it. Then again, you know, Amanda's show, I was on there for two episodes, you know? So, uh, you know, uh, of course, you know, a lot of shit goes on behind closed doors, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I bring up Nickelodeon because it is so cool because that is like, that is such a debate, like Nickelodeon versus Disney. And yeah. You're like, you're like an authority that can, that can lay, that can make a decision on this debate. And it sounds like uh, you're from Disney, even though you have, I know you have little Nickelodeon experience, but just like as a viewer, because you, you do have an insight to like the, the behind the scenes, but as a viewer, golden era, you're on an island, you're stuck for 40 years. What's on the TV? Classic golden era Disney and golden era Nickelodeon. Right. Well, of course, I got I got to go. I don't know, man, because I was a big fan of Are You Afraid of the Dark too. Oh, that Remember? Was great. That was great. That was a good show back in the day, man. Yeah. But I'm I'm into really spooky shit, and I don't know if that actually should have been a kids show, man. That was kind of freaky. <laughs> there were a lot of Nickelodeon shows that should not have been kids shows, like Rock like, Modern Life, Invader Zim. Uh, there were a few yeah. other. <laughs> were over. Dude, the one that got me was Courage the Cowardly Dog, dude. Yes, yes, bro. That shit haunted my dreams for years. Thank you. I mean, even yeah. even even uh, it's funny because a lot of people say that your uh, your film Cat in the Hat haunted people's dreams. When to me, it was The Grinch that stole Christmas. Was the Dr. Seuss adaption that scares the shit out of me? Yo, and dude, that is hysterical. Like that's one of my. That should be that that needs to be played every year. I actually got fucking Taylor. Speaking of that, I got Taylor Mumpson's number at a party once, dude. And I really, that's so cool. And I lost my phone. I, I freaking never got the chance to call her. It's Taylor. probably for the best, though. So. Is she married though now? I think she's she's probably married too. We're all thirty now. I don't think so. No, no. She single? Well, then, hey, I mean, Google I mean, it. I, I could put on some eyeliner. I, I'm, I shit. Let's do it. Okay. You play any instruments? I think she's in the, she's a musician. Um, I play the. I'm a mean kazoo player. Mean <laughs> kazoo. I'm so crazy we're talking about Disney Nickelodeon because I know because there is so much serious so, serious social uh, political stuff going on. It's Dude, fun. I know it's, it's it's hard to talk even talk about it. Like we had our yeah. our even Stevens 20th year anniversary the other day, and like it is it's cool, you know meeting everybody and it's, it's a big thing it's our 20th year anniversary but it's like like there's this weird elephant in the room almost you know like is, is are we gonna make it in 2021 like this tv show is great well, that too. Are, is, is there, like do i need to head for the hills do i need to like get into the bunker and uh, right right dude what do you think the direction of the entertainment industry is going in i think a lot of it's going to be uh a home entertainment. I think home entertainment is going to be the, the wave of the future, to be real. So Netflix, Hulu, Amazon, Peacock. Yeah, and just direct a, direct a video, you know? YouTube, this. Right this, now. I think, yeah, I think it's going to be this. You know, you know, you want it, uh, push a button, pay for it, and there you go, dude. Agreed. So. Or do you think that's it's for better or for worse? That it's so, like, on demand, but also... There's no no filter. Like no, we, man. I think media is 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 just a is, has got to evolve with the times, just like freaking the radio did, like the television did, like movies have done, like the internet did. We just have to evolve with the times, and we can't be stuck. You know. My my opinion too is uh, I think that like the, the last great American comedy was Observe and Report, Seth Rogen, Jody Hill, and I think we've had a bad run of comedies. Do you think comedy is is kind of taking a hit because of? I didn't see Observe and Report. Don't oh, me. go watch that. I think it might be on Netflix. Go Gee. watch it. with well, you was this is the end after that though? Because I like this is the end. I could watch that all day long. I thought the like it's interesting because I thought this is the end. That the trailer, like when they had a teaser for it, was better than the movie because it was such a great concept. But I thought the execution was pretty lazy and it was too improvised. And like Seth Rogen's got to lay off the weed. Nothing against weed, but like he. <laughs> like, I think there's like a little laziness in, in like the, the scripting. I see but, that. You, so you think this the end was the last good comedy? Well, yeah, that was yeah. Um, yeah, dude. I didn't. I didn't see any. I you're, you're fucking right. Come to think of it, dude. I haven't really yeah. seen any good comedies lately. And that's what kind of made America like. That's kind of what like gave us a cultural edge is we really developed comedy 
from it's Mark Twain to like the Vaudeville era, the Marx Brothers, Three Stooges. So like, yeah, the 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 the, the Harold Ramis era of Stripes and Caddyshack and Animal House, and it's been tough. And I think Judd Apatow's kind of fallen fall asleep at the will because he has so much talent. But like, I saw, is... I saw. Did you see the recent one, the like King of Long Island? No, I haven't seen that. Oh, I still got to see that. The Gordy? Yeah, it's like a made-for-TV special. Dude, everybody liked it, dude. A bunch of people were telling me to watch that. Uh, you'll see. Like, it's like it's not bad, but it's like it's like a made-for-TV special on like on trauma. Oh, really? Yeah. On trauma? Because it was so corny. Like, you'll see. Like, you'll you'll see everything coming like ten miles away. Oh, uh, really? We need some even Stevens. Like, yo, we, we had dude. TV. The one thing I am stoked though. Fucking. Uh, Unsolved Mysteries, bro, just fucking dropped on Netflix today. Really? I'll check dude, that out. I was just fucking checking that out before like, our interview today, dude. Oh, uh, dude. It's it's dope. The first episode is really just got me back into it because I was a huge, huge into that shit when I was a kid. Oh, that's how I go to bed every night is a YouTube uh, re- True Crime Mysteries. Oh, dude, that's awesome. Or Conspiracy I'm- Theories, too. That's why I'm talking about Pizza Gate earlier. Okay, the one thing I wanted to talk the one thing I wanted to talk about too, dude, is like why do all these fucking Disney characters wear gloves? And oh, yes. Yeah. Al- allegedly they did that because it's the hands are easier to draw. Well, I don't I don't think that. I think that's bullshit. Number okay, one. what's the truth? What's the real truth? The truth is all the fucking characters wear gloves and they were the first fucking theme park to shut down. Remember? Whoa. I think oh. those gloves have a little bit of fucking red on them. Is what I have to say. Isn't, isn't there a Disney World in China, too? Isn't there a Disneyland China? There is a Disney... Um, Beijing, yeah. No, uh, there are rumors that... Uh, like, that, like not that they caused it, but that, like, there were emails exchanged between Amazon and some Netflix executives saying, like, isn't this coronavirus great? Because movie theaters are, are shut down. Oh, that's pretty messed up. I, I'm I'm fucking joking, y'all, dude. And some people no, no, think me this too, shit. but like it, it is like it is it is great for streaming right now because AMC is done. Yeah, I think it's gonna be hard to run a movie theater business, and, and, and it already was before coronavirus. But now, wow. Well, before this, they were they were bitching about showing Universal movies. They were not gonna they weren't gonna show Universal movies. AMC. Well, absolutely. They were upset that they were like releasing it too quickly on to on demand. Yeah. So they were going to pr- protest not showing Universal movies. Good luck doing that now, AMC. <laughs> were you on Movie? You remember Movie Pass? That was so funny. What a scam. Oh, dude, no. I, I never did it, but everybody was telling me to do it. It was awesome. It was just it was a, it was a stock scam. As they gave out a product for way too cheap just so the stock price can go up, and they lost a bunch of money. <laughs> now it's over. Oh, wow. That's pretty yeah. amazing. No, I had it. It was great. They were losing money. So they, they were paying the movie theaters full price but you were paying a monthly price of $10 a month. And so if you saw two movies, the company, Movie Pass lost money. Right. Yeah. That's amazing. And you could see a movie a day. It was awesome. Because I still miss it. Like, so yeah, what's, what's your preferred way to watch a movie? Do you still miss movie theaters? Are you phone, the, screen? The, dude, the big ones, yeah, dude. Like, I love to see the big blockbusters, of course, in a huge theater with a big-ass surround sound and a... Big old, big old movie screen. Yeah, you know. I think the. Yeah, I think that, and that's the sad thing. I think, you know, the blockbusters you're gonna want to see in the big screens, but you know, um, you know, they're not gonna have the budget for it anymore to be able to do to do that. You know. So. I think Clint Eastwood used to talk about how like uh, he like was always like, uh, like self conscious because he's like. The budget of this movie could take over a country. Like we could like <laughs> we could buy or like commit war against a country with the budget of this of this like independent movie. And so how do you justify that for like an action movie where it's like literally a billion dollar budget? Dude, I don't know, bro. I, I <laughs> it's it's kinda it kinda it kinda puts in retrospect where as Americans our values are, you know. Yeah, well, I think history. I don't think it's just. I don't think it's you need to America. I think that's been over over time, like uh, bread and circuses. That if we don't have that enter- entertainment, we go crazy. But it, but it's a bad. I mean, dude, I know so many you know like immigrants that learn to speak English because of movies from oh, movies. 
from freaking movies, you know? One of my best friends who might be watching this this, uh, this interview right now, he learned how to speak English from Mr. Mister Rogers. But he has, he has the best accent ever because of Mr. Rogers. Could you argue that it's propaganda? Could you argue that it's almost propaganda? Oh, you? I mean, you don't – I mean, it's a fact. Yeah. You can argue. Like, I think the – doesn't the U.S. government have a whole, like, division that works with movies? And so anytime you see, like, like Iron Man or Top Gun – where you're seeing like U.S. military equipment, there there was a script supervisor. They said no. I, I do know they do have consultants. Uh, you know there are films and movies that work. You know definitely have consultants, and they consult you know people off top for sure. I know X Files for sure had that. Yeah, you know, X Files is one that. You know some people are like eh, I don't know man, did you get a tip or did you think that up? You must have gotten a fucking tip. Let's be real. You know? Yeah, no, I, I think it's, yeah, I forgot which department in the government, but there is a whole movie department where they, they, they look over scripts, get sold, and if you pass muster, you get more money or resources. Yeah. You know, and, and um, you know, just to talk a little bit more shit about the mouse, I was thinking, um, you know, what has Disney really done to, like, man, our kids? It's like, we were. I was talking about maybe why. That's why the fucking divorce rate is at fifty percent because the disnification of fucking marriages. Oh yeah. You know why do so many little girls have eating disorders now? Because our fucking Barbies have they have a fucking waist like that? You know. Uh, I I don't know, man. Well, even 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 on a like a average like one thing. I'm a, I'm a movie nerd. An average shot length used to be fourteen seconds per shot in like the seventies. And now yeah. I think it's like 1.5 seconds per shot. And that, that, uh, that a lot has to do with Disney and, and Nickelodeon of just uh, like, you know, the thing I'm going to invest money in. They did a study where SpongeBob cause like promotes attention deficit disorder because the shot lengths are so. I've got a good idea and I, I'm going to put my nest egg into it. Let's do it. Fat, fat Barbie. Fat Barbie. They were going to humor. They were going to do it, but then she, she backed out. What? Fat Barbie. Yeah, she, they're, they were going to make a Barbie movie with Amy Schumer, and then she backed out. Because, yeah, Fat Barbie would have been great. And hell yeah. Like, they said if Barbie was a person, like, she would die in, like, ten minutes. Cause of, like, oh, God. Well, we die. can't put fucking Amy Schumer in it because she'd kill it, dude. I want to yeah. do it like an actual thing for, like, you know, girls to feel better about themselves. And that's the worst thing you could do if you put fucking Amy Schumer in it. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> yeah, they need a fat, they need a, a fatter Bob, a, a thick Barbie. Like someone like fucking Lizzo. Let's put fucking Lizzo in it. Have her be fed Barbie. I'd be up there fucking singing along, dude. Oh, no, bitch. Then she's fierce, bro. Come on. And good and good for the children because they need to they need to realize that it's okay to be you, dude. Be you. Right. I I'm down for it. I'm putting some money at, at it. I'm down. I'm putting. Let's I got go. five on it. I got five on it. Fat I ball. got five on it. I'm in the sure. theater. 2022. <laughs> Not much competition. Because <laughs> yeah, no, the comedies have for me have been have been just like so lackluster for the last decade, and it's such a shame. Because I think that's the biggest area for for politics to enter into entertainment. It's because comedy is all about criticism, and that's missing. Yeah, that's yeah that is. I was watching old old freaking roast episodes of Jeff Ross. That's how deprived I am of it, man. <laughs> Those are great. I was watching that on the shitter today, dude. Just one thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's funny because oh, Trump was on there. Did you see that one? The roast of Donald Trump? Oh, God, dude. Yeah. For, is it for <laughs> Seth? Uh... So crazy to think about in like, in like, like today, today's term. That's like the U.S. president. Being... Yeah, we have roasted a U.S. president on Comedy Central. <laughs> on Comedy Central, too. With like next level jokes. That's uh, that's, that's, that's mild, that's mind-boggling to think about. You know, I think honestly that freaking Rose has more to play in why he's president now than not, though. Uh, oh, I mean, no, in general, like uh, Justin Bieber, they said that was a PR move, where that he wanted to make an apology for all of his his stunts, and they said screw making an apology, go on the Rose, because then you people will accept you. Yeah, I mean, it's good. It's true. That makes a lot of sense. I mean. Yeah. Especially with the roast, dude. I mean, a lot of those jokes hit hard. Especially even the ones Obama. I mean, remember the one Obama did with him there? Oh, I uh, think Tom Lovitz wrote it. The, the comedian from SNL. Oh, wow. said, like he made fun of The Apprentice. He's like, I know you got to make tough decisions, Trump. Are you gonna fire Flavor Flav or are you gonna fire Vanilla Ice? 
<laughs> me up at night. <laughs> yes, that's what yeah. he said. The ones that keep you up at night. And man, the look on his face just said, "Oh, I'm taking you down, dude." No, no, yeah, that seemed like a Terminator moment where it was like, "Okay, that was the moment where Trump's like, okay, I'm actually going to run for president." <laughs> Screw you guys! I'm going to the White House. Pretty much, dude, and yeah. and, and, that, and that was the motive, motive of it. Oh God! Dude. You think it's a little I, positive that at least politics are more, at least in the forefront. That even even if there is a lot of negative and sensationalism, that at least people are talking about politics where they might not have as much like ten years ago. I yeah, think. yeah. I think I think it's positive. I think it's positive, man. But it's like it's like what you're seeing in Hong Kong right now. I I see that happening to us. You know, and it's like yeah, okay. They they were supposed to get their freedom in 2043. And now all this shit's going on, so they don't give a fuck. Or they, you know, it's becoming less of a news story. And, you know, I don't know. I'm with you. And I, I'm, I'm getting worried, especially with the mail-in voting. You know, that's trying to be, you know, gerrymandered and not get out. Um, who knows how many people are actually going to go out and vote, you know? Oh, yeah. that's. I mean, that's one thing that people don't talk about is that majority of people do not vote. Like some can because of and, and, and especially right now, you know, who could yeah. blame them going out to, you know, vote with a pandemic going on? Absolutely. Or and also with with the candidates being so lackluster. Yeah, that, that, another aspect, you know. So I don't. Yeah, I, I've, I've, I mean, it makes sense why there's more people that voted for American Idol than they do in elections. I, I was going to mention a comedy that I, that I like that is so relevant now. Is do you ever read the book or see the movie Being There? Jersey the movie what? Being there, Peter Sellers. No, no. Give that a watch. So relevant. Really? Yeah, it's about a guy that has uh, developmental issues, and he 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 randomly kind of walks away into a political career. So everyone thinks he's really smart. <laughs> he's just saying nonsense, and they think he's just being a philosophical genius. Great book and movie. So pretty much, Rain Man becomes president or something. Even worse. <laughs> Kiwi Herman becomes president. Oh, which, God. Which, which might happen. Dude, fucking, you know, I, um, a friend of mine, who was it? My old manager or yeah. friggin' uh, publicist or something was driving me around in, like, the hills. And, like, freaking, he drove me by this one house. He's like, guess whose house that is? And in the stained glass in the, in the house, in the window, has a little stained glass window. It's a big old stained picture of freaking Pee Wee Herman. No way. Yeah, dude, What's, the word? Like, What's the word? <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he has this big old stained glass picture of him in his fucking window, like in his right in front of his house. That's crazy. It's weird as hell. It is, and he fell off too, because he he was on the up and up, and then he was masturbating in a in a movie theater, and then just. Dude, honestly, I had a friend and I were walking around Hollywood, and I found one of those fucking places, dude. Dude, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you a funny story, bro. This is a yeah. true fucking story. Friend and I were walking around Hollywood. We were going to get something to eat, and we passed by this fucking adult bookstore. And my friend was like, "Dude, fucking, this is one of those fucking Pee Wee Herman places." I'm like, "Nah, dude." He's like, "Let's go in. Let's go in." I'm like, "Dude, I don't I don't know." So like, we're about to fucking go in. And this freaking drag queen in a wheelchair bumps into me with this big old wig and goes, do you have any poppers? <laughs> and I nope the fuck out of there so quick. We turned around and whoop, other way. <laughs> uh, thank you so much, Steven, everyone. Uh, follow him on Facebook, on Instagram. Uh, check out Kicking and Screaming. Free watch Even Stevens, Cat in the Hat, Father of Mine, Everclear music video. Classic, one of the best songs ever. And uh, <laughs> no, no, thank you so much. We got to do this again. Definitely, buddy. Definitely. Till next time. Till next time. Thank you.